All right, everybody, we're back with another one. We're changing these out today, brake shoes. Once they get down to a quarter of an inch, it's time to change them out. And these brake shoes on these big rigs, they come with a mark right here. And once it gets down to that mark, as you can see by the ruler there, that's a quarter of an inch. So, and anywhere on that pad, anywhere on that pad that it's a quarter of an inch, that means it's time to change it. And you can get away with uh, 3 16 of the brake shoes on your front axle, on your steering axle, only if the pad is a continuous pad, meaning there's no split. See, this one's split, so the rule for a split for the front is you can only have quarter inch wear. All right, well, we're looking at the driver's side rear of my truck, and as you can see, the pads look pretty good on this one. They, uh, they still got quite a bit of wear, but we're not changing out this side. We're changing out this side. As you can see, it's right at that quarter inch mark. And before I even work on anything on the that rear end, I'm gonna dump the airbags. And I'm also gonna take all the air out of the entire system. Okay, so we got all the air completely drained from the system. On this rear axle, whenever you set the parking brake, these pads on the rear axle, they're not going to make contact with those shoes. And the reason for that, these brake chambers, they do not contain a spring like the front ones do. I'll show you the front one. Okay, we're up on the front axle now. And as you can see, the front axle has brake chambers that are quite a bit bigger than the uh, brake chambers on the rear axle and the reason for that is because they contain a spring in them so whenever you set your brakes that spring applies pressure to the S cam which in turn sets your brakes that's your parking brake but it only does it on this axle it doesn't do it on this one so we got the truck under the shade got the air all drained out of the system the next step is to put some chalks in front of, uh, I like to at least do three of the tires. We'll do two up front. And we got one over here on the back. And then we got one over here on the passenger side. Now that we got our wheels chalked, the next step is to go ahead and take these um, wheel fastener covers off of here. And then once we have those off, go ahead and loosen up the wheel fasteners. Oh, about a full turn. And then you can go ahead and raise the wheel off the ground and zip them on off. You don't want to raise it up and then try to zip them off. Um, go ahead and do it while it's on the ground. And I really don't care too much about these uh, covers. Obviously they're rusted up, but I do like to use like a rubber mallet. Kind of. Sometimes they're on there though. Man, those things are they're hard to get off a lot of times. You can just pull them off with your with your fingers and i've featured this bad boy on my channel uh a few different times i think on two different videos so i won't go too in depth on this one but man this thing is awesome it'll bust loose anything any lug nut i should say just to clarify Mm. 
We got all those lug nuts loosened up. Now we can put this thing back in the box. That sucker fell on my knee a while ago and oh my God, that hurt. All right. All right, as you can see, we got the truck jacked up in the air. And I went ahead and put a jack stand under here. Um, obviously, this jack stand isn't holding up the entire weight of the rear end. We got six other tires on the ground. What I usually do is just kind of put the jack stand under there and then kind of let, the, let it down on the jack stand, but don't let it down to where all the pressure's off of the jack. So you want to still have some of the pressure of the jack on it just kind of evenly between the two i can't fit my my real tall heavy duty jacks under here there's not really anywhere good to put them but this works just fine this is it's not going anywhere that's for sure okie dokie man it is hot out here oh, it's hotter than my wife's gonna be after she sees what i did with this kitchen rag <laughs> She'll get over it. I just buy our new rags, right guys? That's the only way. All right, time to zip these bad boys off the hill. Well, we ended up getting the tires off of there. So now it's time to get this brake drum off and we're gonna blow off all this dust first. Well, I think it's about to rain. I had to take my canopy down. It was about to blow away. But we're gonna work out in here until it starts pouring down because that's how I get down. I guess we need the rain. It still pisses me off though. All right, before you take that drum off, because that's what's going to be after this, you want to go ahead and get all the slack out of those brake pads. So go ahead and get down here. And I made a custom little tool. Use one of these wood chisels. I just cut a little groove in it. It works really well for this. And once you pop that out, you just turn this square right here. Turn it clockwise to uh, loosen up the brakes and as you can see it's spread out those brakes quite a bit and I usually just turn it about as far as I can turn it that way I get these as much slack as I can get out of these brakes uh, to allow for new ones and now it's time to go ahead and take those drums off of there obviously you want to make sure you got some air protection because it's about to get loud get you a big old hammer and uh just hit it a couple times about right there don't get out here try to get it right in here just a couple wax usually will knock it loose Well, now we got the drum off of here, and as you can see, this uh, top shoe wore down pretty evenly. See right here. Well, some people might be saying, well, you still got plenty of pad left on those things. You know, you still got another 50,000 miles <laughs> out of those. I don't know why, but this lip, it's not exactly a quarter of an inch it's a little bit over um, regardless 
we're going to change it when it gets down to that because uh you know i doubt it if dot officers know that and i'm not going to sit there and argue with them um, that's a lost cause you can see right here uh, right there where that eight is that's a quarter inch mark so you can see we don't have a whole lot of pad left center is always going to have more the edges are going to they're going to wear faster look at that one there's not much left at all on that right there it's a quarter inch not much left at all and that's where he's going to measure i guarantee you here's the bottom one right there's my quarter inch mark not much left same for the other side well i always like to uh clean off all the dust and the crap before i take these things apart and uh here's how i do it you can do it however you want to do it i don't have an air compressor Well, we're ready to start tearing these brakes apart. Before I do that, I'm going to explain a little bit how how everything gets to here. It's called your S-cam, but uh, let's go back a little. All right, this part under here, this is your brake chamber. This is where your air is going to run to. Whenever you hit your brakes, that air compresses in there, and it pushes this rod. The rod is going to push on this part right here. This is your slack adjuster. This, this mechanism right here is what it automatically keeps your brakes where they need to be. You don't have to come down here and adjust them. Every so often it'll click over another turn as those brakes wear down. So they call these automatic slack adjusters. Will cause this to turn. And this is this is your S cam, which runs out to the uh, to where we were at a while ago to the to the pads. As it pushes on this this is going to go around so obviously as this goes around it's going to pivot on this which which is going to turn this it's going to turn it that way counterclockwise okay so, so now we're on the outside remember i said that this turns counterclockwise but we're looking at it from the other way so it turns from this side it turns clockwise it turns that way so as it turns this s cam will spread out it spreads out those pads and you can see if this was to turn clockwise this slope right here would cause this to come down a little and this one right here would cause this to come up meaning it spreads those pads out and that's what happens when you apply the brakes um, I know that's just a pretty broad uh, understanding of it uh, pretty limited but that is my understanding all right, enough chit chat. Let's go ahead and get these um, brake shoes pulled off. First thing you wanna do is pull these springs off. Um, not the side that the S cam is on, which is this side. You wanna pull them off this side. Well, we got both those springs off. So now you're gonna to wanna to lift up on the top pull down on the bottom. And then you can just, generally, they'll just come right off, like so. All right, let's start with the easy stuff. And they give you these uh, new sleeves to put in if you so dare to put in here i'm not going to try it i think the only way to get these out and put these back in without tearing them to hell is to take this whole thing off and then press them out and press them back in and you got to take loose um a lot of crap so i'm not going to do it and uh that's that if you got a problem with it i don't know what to tell you you know i just don't i can't satisfy everybody you know I believe it's, yeah, these, oh wait, oh, I'm sitting here looking at these like, am I putting in the, the old ones? No, these are the new ones, uh, these are the old ones, put this old crap over here. Next up is these bad boys, just look at your old stuff, figure out where to put this crap at, this is the old one, I'm going to go ahead and get these springs here, open this bag up. 
All right, so you just gotta look at your old one there, compare it to the new one. Well, that's how it goes on that one, you know, kaboom. And then uh, this old one already, you know, it's still got the piece in there, so you can just lay your new one. You can lay your, oh, damn thing is heavy. <laughs> lay your new one right next to it. And uh, just match them up, that's all you gotta do. See, those two match. So that goes there. And uh, you're just gonna wanna squeeze that and it'll snap down in there, like so. And then uh, this piece right here, well, see it over here? Just match it up to this one. And uh, how do you put that in there? You stick it in like that, as far as you can get it. And then you just take a sledge and you just, uh, you just hit it. There it is. All right, our two brake shoes are ready to go. And here's the part that's a little bit tricky and you're gonna to wanna to start with the bottom one, set it where it needs to be. Uh, kinda of move all your crap out of the way. Put it underneath that wheel. Put your spring down in there. I like that. first been a while since I've done one of these we got the top one on as you can see it's sitting in the S-cam okay so now we got to pull the bottom one on okay we finally got it on I don't do these all the time obviously but uh, hey we got it didn't we and there's the other side just got to kind of tap in that piece right there. There it goes. Now we can put these springs on. Hopefully uh, this will go a lot better than the other side. Here's how I put these on. Just hook that spring up to the top. Put your vice grips there on the bottom. And then just kind of uh, pull it on down. to see but I basically just attached some vice grips to that spring and then I used a uh, pry bar to kind of go in there you know underneath the axle and then pry down on those vice grips so I can reach the hole well we're good to go just do some final checks make sure everything's all lined up make sure your your little springs are in place they haven't popped out make sure your these springs haven't came out you know just just give it a good look over and yeah we're good time to put that drum back on there got the drum back on there now it's time to go ahead and take up what slack we have which we don't have nearly as much as we did before you just do the same thing you did last time except instead of going clockwise uh, you go counterclockwise you'll feel it tighten up whenever you're tightening up these brakes you don't want to keep turning this thing as you know It'll just snug up and that's it for it. And then you'll come out here and you'll see that your drum 
it won't even turn well maybe we got a little bit more ways to go let's see here let's see what that did all right yeah they're tight now so now you want to back it off about i believe it's about half of a turn Right about there. Just leave it a little bit of slack. All right, well, we got the lug nuts about as tight as we can get them with this. And uh, this bar right here, it's about 40 inches. You can go to a torque converter and you can figure out how much torque your body weight is going to have. You know, you put in uh, that the bar is like 40 inches and it's, uh, with me it's 195 pounds. So 195 pounds on 40 inches, how much torque is that? And a torque converter will figure that out anyway for me it's 650 pounds of torque this truck requires about 450 to 500 pounds so we're way over that if somebody's telling you that that's not the proper torque it actually is now what is improper torque are the tire shops that just zip these things on there <clears throat> as tight as they can possibly get with a two thousand dollar air gun that stretches the studs out and can end up breaking them and makes it really hard to get them off. I'll keep doing it this way. I don't really want to spend $2,000 on an air gun and another $1,500 on an air compressor. All right, I believe we're done. And these lug nut covers, sometimes they go on loose. Even You can even tap them on there, and uh, they just come right off. So a good way to uh, make sure that they don't come off is to uh, just give them a little, little tap, usually kind of right there. And uh, it might sit on there a little better. on there now and of course before you pull away remember pull your tools out and uh, get that jack out of there too remember guys there's no shame in taking a truck to a shop and having them do the work you know everybody has their limits just be sure you do some research and get on Google look at the reviews don't just take it to any shop um, but there ain't no shame in that all right, guys, catch you on the next one.
don't forget to subscribe and like my videos and uh, what can I promise you uh, oh I know I know you subscribe to my channel and you'll get a beautiful refrigerator like me uh, someday you will oh yeah where's the camera you will